If you've been single for a while and are reaching a boiling point of frustration and disappointment in men and dating, maybe you feel like the guys you're connecting with are unattractive, immature, disrespectful, or only want to hook up, to the point where at times you've seriously considered throwing in the towel. Well, today I'm gonna to share with you the real, not obvious reason why you're not meeting great guys, and better yet, how you can find that needle in the haystack type of guy that you've been looking for. If you're watching this video, maybe you're tired of guys who are showing up and they just want to hook up. They connect with you, they maybe become sexual really early on on the apps, or they plain to your face tell you they're not looking for something serious and are you up to just going home with them that first night. Maybe you're tired of guys showing up interested and curious and hungry and charming and then all of a sudden when you least expect it they ghost you and disappear forever or maybe they disappear for three weeks and then come back as if nothing happened maybe you're tired of guys lying to you in big and small ways they tell you they want to be exclusive and you find out the next day they're dating three other women maybe you're tired of connecting with guys who show up with a sense of entitlement who feel like they deserve for you to be their girlfriend and stop dating other guys because they went on a first date with you. Maybe you connect with guys who are showing a lack of pursuit. It feels like pulling teeth. They may be interesting, they may be charming, they may have some good qualities, but the fact that they're showing up this dismally interested, where it's hit or miss, hot and cold, is making you feel like they're disrespecting your space. Maybe you're facing the reality of connecting with some guys you're attracted to who don't feel attracted back to you. If you're going through any of these experiences, sometimes on repeat, sometimes for years, then my heart goes out to you because there's multiple reasons why this is painful in life, but I'm going to share right now the most important ones that are costing you. The number one reason why this is painful is because the cost of opportunity. The time you're investing right now in dating these guys time and time again it's time you could be using to do many other things in life that would feel more fun and more fulfilling than that process. It's painful because you might be metaphorically holding your breath. Maybe you have a specific goal of buying a home or starting a family or traveling to a specific point in the world and you've done things by yourself and you've done things with friends, but now is the time where you feel like you wanna do these things with your true life partner and the fact he's not showing up means that you're having your life on hold. Maybe at times there's a sense of loneliness that's showing up in your life. Why? Because your friends are doing great things with their partners and your family's doing great things in couples and when you show up, they care for you and they love you and they never make you feel like you don't belong, but you feel like you don't belong. You go to a party and there's something missing sometimes when you want that relationship and there's no one holding your hand. Maybe you have a medical experience where you have to show up and there's no one there with you at that level of intimacy who, who really cares about you. And it feels just devastating at times. So if you're going through these experiences, there's a couple of lists of reasons why you're not meeting great men. And we can talk and complain about the first list, but I'm not gonna to invest too much time in it because there's nothing we can do or very little we can do to change it. But there's gonna be a second list of ideas, concepts, realities that you have influence and control over that can change this experience for you for good. So the reason why I'm gonna bring up the first list is because I don't want you to think that I'm placing the blame on you. You are not meeting great guys because you're not doing enough stuff. I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying to you right now is that there's logistical reasons that are heavy and not fun why this isn't happening as fast as it could be happening. The first one is because, let's face it, we live in a patriarchal world. It's changing, it's getting better, but for thousands of years, men have had the upper end of the stick in many different areas of life. I mean, anyone wants to claim it's not true, they haven't stepped one day in your shoes. The reality is many guys show up still expecting for you to carry the burden in some ways without having to put in the responsibility, without having to put in the time, the energy, the emotional commitment to be worthy of the level of intimacy that they're seeking. There's a lack of meaning in many of these guys' lives that are making them show up less than awesomely with women. Because here's the thing, if a guy's unsure about what he wants in life, if he's having mental issues, if he hasn't found what he's here for, how on earth is he gonna be able to offer you something of substance in a meaningful lifelong relationship? It's really, really hard for him to show up that way when he hasn't even figured out his own stuff. 
there's a feeling also in this day and age of disposability, right? Meaning it's not a human being that you're saying no to, it's a swipe to the left or to the right. So when you seemingly have thousands of options at your fingertips while pooping, you can make left and right decisions around this. Well, people tend to get less interested in one specific person. There's also the raising of standards, right? I think it's a very powerful, very positive thing that women are raising their standards and that men also, awesome guys, are raising the standards in terms of what they're looking for in a relationship. You're not just looking for a boyfriend. You're looking for a guy who's going to be an emotional partner, a physical partner, sexual partner, spiritual partner. You want a cheerleader. You want a guy who's gentle, yet strong at times. So you want a lot that hasn't fully existed all in one person in the past. And the reality is times haven't really caught up to the level of our standards uh, today. So, so in essence, what I'm saying is there's going to be a larger number of women right now who are looking for super intimate, emotional, spiritual, physical connection, and not necessarily the same number of guys who are seeking the same thing. The reason why I'm not focusing only on this is because we can say, this is the reality, life sucks, let's just not have a partner, or we can say, how can we circumvent the system? How can I get what I want, irrespective of most people having the type of reality that I'm talking about right now? How can I rise above the noise so that even though this reality exists, my reality can be different than most. Now, before I share my non-obvious list of reasons why you're not meeting great men, if you have been single for a while and you're really going at it and you understand it, a great compliment to this video is a quiz that I created that's gonna share with you the number one reason you're still single. So if you want to find your answer, all you have to do is go to the first link in the description of this video. You'll see a page that looks like this answer a few simple questions and in 60 seconds you'll have the answer to the question number one reason you're still single and then a report that's going to share with you based on your specific challenge and blind spot what's the number one thing you can do starting today to reverse this trend and attract the guy you want in a fraction of the time now for the list of non-obvious reasons that you have emotional physical and psychological control over the first reason why you're not meeting great men is because you're in a hamster wheel of comfort now, before you throw a tomato at me and shut down this video, this is not what I'm saying. I'm not saying that you're comfortable dating guys who are showing up disrespectfully. I'm saying that there's a level of comfort in the, thing, in the way you're doing things. You tend to do use the same app. You tend to go to the same places. You tend to connect to, with the same type of guys. And what I'm saying to you right now is if you want to break through this curse that you're experiencing right now, you need to be able to go outside of your comfort zone and go to places you don't usually frequent, talk to guys you don't usually talk to and have new experiences where more possibilities exist. Because if you're telling me right now, I do it all and I'm not being great guys, I'll share with you right now, but there's probably blind spots in the locations you're frequenting and in the way you're going about those things that are making it less likely for you to have a bigger pool of men to connect with. Number two is you're overly relying on your dating apps. I have nothing against dating apps. I have hundreds of clients who have met their husband or life partner through a dating app. So I believe in their power. Here's the challenge situation you might be in right now. If that's the only way, the only mechanism you have to connect with men, you're screwed because if that app is not giving you great connections that week, then you're not going to have a great dating week and that's going to impact other parts of your life. So my turnaround for this is you need to be able to create a strategy to connect with men organically every single week, no matter what happens. Because when that's taking place, your app might go through a slump, but you'll still be able to make progress in your dating life. By the way, when you're creating organic connections with men, guess what happens? When you go on dates, you're far more practiced in the art of connecting and setting boundaries. Number three is because your vibe, and understandably, there's no criticism here whatsoever, is more frustrated, more tired, more cynical, more this ain't gonna happen than this will happen and I'm going for it, right? You start fresh, excited, powerful, and then as life starts throwing you different curves and uh, pitfalls, then the tendency for most human beings is to start feeling like this ain't gonna happen and uh, showing up in that is far less powerful, far less attractive than their ideal and best self. So if you've been doing this for a while and you're showing up with one third or one fourth of your radiance and excitement and optimism, then guess what's happening? You're diminishing your chances exponentially because when you connect with a guy 
and the guy senses that in you, a little bit of lack of optimism, maybe pessimism, maybe even cynicism, then he feels less, far less likely to show up better for you. There's guys that you're not connecting with that maybe would connect with you. If you had more openness, if you took more risks, if you made more eye contact, and it's not happening right now because the vibration you're coming at this from is, I don't know if this will happen. So the way you show up, the emotional stance you take is as powerful as the strategy. Sometimes more powerful because you can have a great strategy if the emotional place you're coming from is not one of racing your vibe, then you're gonna have to climb Everest without Sherpa, without a line, with a blindfold, uh, with no food and uh, no oxygen. It's theoretically doable, but who's gonna do it? You know? Reason number four why you're not meeting great men is because you're overvaluing physical attributes and you're going for instant gratification. Here's what I mean. There's plenty of guys who are kind, generous, thoughtful, that you may not be connecting with because you have a hidden rule that says if he's not taller than insert number then he's not a type of guy that i'm going for or he's not my type i don't know his facial expression his look something around the way he's showing up physically and by physically i'm not just talking body appearance i'm talking about his income i'm talking about maybe the degree he has i'm talking about factors that are not the true character and values of a man but are more cosmetic in nature we complain a lot, and rightly so, that men are very visual and that some guys are just going for young women and some guys want women with big boobs and all that stuff. But many women have very specific characteristics physically of what they're going for without really necessarily knowing it. And they're rejecting guys left and right that given some time and energy and emotional connection would feel connected with, would feel attracted to, would feel chemistry with. When you have a hidden thing that says, I must feel like my heart is kind of exploding and I feel his energy from the first moment our eyes meet and it doesn't happen, then you're leaving gold on the table because there's some guys out there that would actually create a strong connection with you that you're saying no to. I'm never an advocate for you connecting with someone long term that you don't feel a strong level of connection with and chemistry with because that's super important in a relationship, but I'm a strong advocate for you not needing that from the first moment to explore what might be possible. Now, if you explore things and it never grows, end it. But if you explore things and things grow to a level that's far more passionate than you originally thought they would, and this has happened so many times in clients' lives, that they connect with someone, I don't know enough about him, he doesn't feel so attractive to me, and then date number four, they're feeling something so strong, and this is a good guy with good values, and now something magic can happen. Number five, reason why you're not meeting great guys is because you're wasting time with the wrong ones because you're wasting time on dates you should never be in in the first place. Because you're going down rabbit holes that are taking away months of your dating experience. For example, you connect with a guy that you never asked what he was looking for in a relationship and then date number seven, when you really like him and you're almost about to make out with him, he lets you know in some ways that he doesn't want something serious and you never took the time to ask that question and you assume that because he's showing up so strong, that's what he wanted, then this is what happens. You get disappointed, you get frustrated, you, your energy goes down, you get a little heartbroken, you have to go out there again, maybe with less energy, with less enthusiasm, with a belief that's stronger around what's not possible. So you lost maybe two or three months in that one guy. Had you asked the question, you would have avoided all that nonsense. Sometimes the boundary around having sex, for example, gets to you when you have sex too early and the guy's not emotionally connected with you and then he ends up either betraying you or leaving you or he's the wrong guy for you. He wants to stay with you, but he's abusive or emotionally toxic, then you have a hard time breaking away from him. So not having strong, clear boundaries around vetting men, dating men, being exclusive with guys, having sex with guys, connecting with guys physically, whether it's something as basic as holding hands and kissing and making out, not having those clear boundaries is making you spin your wheels unnecessarily with men. And it's not just the spinning of wheels with men that are not the right fit for you, it's the aftermath of what happens when those guys don't work out and having to put yourself out there again with a stronger sense of this can't happen. So what I'm saying to you in a nutshell is there's two types of reasons why you're not connecting with great guys. The first one, more obvious than nothing. <laughs> not everybody's the guy that you're looking for. Not everybody wants a strong connection. Not everybody's showing up with a great degree of accountability and passion and professionalism and candor and integrity. 
But on the other side of things, there's things right now that are within your control that you may not be paying attention to that can change your experience in a heartbeat if you take the time and energy to put into practice. Hope this is helpful and useful. And if it is, it would mean the world to me and to my channel if you click like and subscribe. And if you're looking to create a conscious connection with a guy and find how you can do that without the need for gimmicks, manipulation, tricks, or stupid techniques, make sure to check the next video right here.